Hello YouTube, me Peter here with a, another great review for you guys. Today is going to be a Danish beer. It's going to be from Horn, uh, from a brewery I've reviewed a lot of beers from. It's going to be from Horn Beer. It's going to be their standout IPA called Horn Beer IPA. And here you have it. Uh, the picture on here is again, as always, painted by Gunnar Rasmussen, and it is uh, it is called Panic in the Chicken Coop. Where a fox has gotten into the chicken coop and started to eat all the the poultry. Uh, that was a pretty cool label, I think. And the thing I noticed right away when I picked up this bottle, I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but look at all that sediment in the bottom. It is definitely bottle conditioned. There is so much sediment in here. It is crazy. Like a thick, almost a, a pinky... A layer of sediment that is a lot of sediment uh, yeast sediment or whatever but I got some info here from the website uh, I I want to read it aloud by the way it's gonna be well I hope it should be a fairly good uh, IPA from uh, what I have heard about this beer but there is only a few beers from Horn beer that, uh, that I think are, ex are outstanding and that's the Caribbean rum stout and the uh, Magic Woman. The uh, ho Happy Hoppy Viking was good as well, but it wasn't like the best double IPA I've ever had at all. But now if my computer would stop lagging, I'm going to read aloud something from the website. It's in Danish, I'm going to translate it, so it might be a bit rusty. Uh, Horn Beer IPA is our Indian Pale Ale. Originally, IPAs were intended for the English sailors who had to travel the long road to Indri I India. Injury, whatever. <laughs> it is now 200 years ago. For the beer to stay fresh, it was brewed with high alcohol content and with a high bitterness from the hops. We've looked a little to what the American microbreweries have, uh, which uh, have given the IPA, the IPA, or oh, that have given IPAs their own interpretation, something like that. But they've been inspired essentially by American microbrew. We have added malt that gives a little more residual sweetness and hops which gives plenty of aroma and pleasant bitterness try Hornbier IPA with uh, to toast it rye bread with gorgonzola or other sharp soft tea cheeses the, I the bitterness of the IPA goes great with an, uh, along with the sharp cheese flavor and these uh, two things fits great together that's it uh, but I knew that IPAs are great with cheeses, but let's crack it open and get it poured. It's a half a liter, one pint bottle, and it's on 6.5% alcohol, so not too high, a bit high. Mmm, that smells pretty good. It smells quite juicy. Mmm. Last IPA I had was the IPA from uh, Southern Tier. That was good. But not my favorite IPA in any way. It was good. Well, but still, it was a really good IPA. But it wasn't like a very weak IPA. It was a good... Yeah. I'm not going to go into that. That's not the beer we're dealing with today. Wow, that was a huge head. Okay. Color. Amber color. Definitely amber. Uh, I'd say this is sort of a tan. No, not tan. A beige head. Or khaki. A beige, yeah, it's a beige head with, well, it's got, well, uh, not, not too much carbonation, but it's got some, definitely. Uh, but, it's darker than I would Let's expect. dig in and check out the aroma of this beer. Um, well, the head, uh, I think that's head, this head here is, yeah, well, it might be staying, because it's quite, quite frothy, actually, but let's check out the aroma. Okay, the aroma is mostly dominated by a, a pretty juicy, hoppy aroma. Uh, But it's not like an amazing aroma at all. Uh, I'll see if it can pour some of this in. Now it's going to be way more cloudy. Because that's a lot of the sediment. But I don't have a problem with sediment at all. I like the sediment. Uh, well, that is a lot of sediment. Look how cloudy it became now. Way more cloudy. Whatever. Uh, but Citrusy aroma. Uh, quite juicy and fruity. Uh... 
So we've got a, a small multi backbone as well. Uh, and then some caramel. Yeah, definitely caramel. Mostly it's dominated by hops, sort of a juicy hop. It's, but it's quite a different aroma for an IPA. Uh, it isn't your usual IPA aroma. Let's check it out, the flavor. Mmm, it's pretty good. Um, actually quite boozy. Uh, which I wouldn't expect for a, a regular IPA. Mm, strange. Um, but overall, mm, it's got a nice um, spicy, hoppy bite to it. Uh, but it's like citrusy in the flavor. There's grapefruit. And there's just a tad of piney hops. And then it's spi that spicy, hoppy bite. Like, and it's quite dry uh, on on your tongue. Uh, but it's not as dry like some lambics are, for example. A geese lambic can really be really, really dry, but this is quite dry. This is probably one of the driest IPAs I've ever had in texture and mouthfeel. Um, but it's pretty good. Um, There is somewhat of a, a caramel malty flavor in this as well, but it's not much. Rating wise, I'm probably going to rate this a four. It's a pretty good IPA, actually. Uh, I didn't expect it to be this good. I was sort of expecting a weak IPA, but it's pretty good, actually. But uh, still, this doesn't beat the hot fix. The hot fix is so amazing. I've, I haven't had an IPA so far that, that beat the hot fix. The only one that was close was the founder's double trouble but um it's pretty good you can get any horn beer this is a beer you should check out it's pretty pretty good ipa so a 84 from me for the horn beer ipa and uh, check out my other horn beer reviews i haven't got that many views on the beers from horn beer but uh check them out and uh subscribe if you like my videos guys comment let me know what you think and cheers and i'll see you in the next review